This is more modeling fraction subtraction with unlike denominators. We're at 6.2b. 6.2a is linked in the description. So just like we did with addition, we can use models to subtract fractions that have different denominators. So remember, the top number is the numerator, we have a fraction bar, and the bottom number is the denominator. You can go to the Joanne School Facebook page to the images and you can print out a sheet of these fraction bars and cut them. Then you can cut the little separate fractions from each other. And the fraction bars are all the same height, going all the way across. Each bar equals one whole. So, as we said in the previous video, here we have a half and a half together that equals one whole. We have a third, a third, a third. That equals one whole. That's three thirds. And do you see what's happening here? How the numerators and denominators are the same? Well, when they're the same, we know it's equal to one whole. And also, as we mentioned in the previous video, when the numerator and denominator are the same number, the fraction equals one. Here we have a three thirds. That's one. We have three parts of three parts. When the numerator is less than the denominator, like this one-third, the fraction is less than one. We only have one part out of the three parts. When the numerator is greater than the denominator, here are the numerators of four and the denominator is a three, then the fraction is greater than one. Three-thirds would equal one. We have four-thirds. That's more than one. So, just like when we were doing addition, we've cut our little pieces apart from each other. These one-thirds are separated from each other. We cut them apart, okay? We separated each bar and cut those, and then we cut each separate fraction apart. We can model three-fourths minus one-eighth. What we do is we take three one-fourth pieces, three-fourths, and we line it up next to a one-eighth piece. We put it right on the side, and that means we're looking for this section right here to make it equal. We need to find the fraction pieces that will fill this empty space so that we can find the difference between the three-fourths and that one-eighth. This empty space, whatever it is, that's the difference. We want it to be in the simplest form, which means the numerator and denominator will only have one as a common factor. We're going to get into this more in a couple more lessons. So, we can compare it to one whole. We can see where three-fourths is to one whole. See that? It's a little bit smaller than one whole. We need to find this amount right here. Okay? We can try putting a half here, and well, that won't make it. We can try putting a third here. Nope, that's taller than the yellow one, see? We can try fifths. You can take these models and lay them on the table and try to find ones that will line up perfectly. Nope, the yellow one's taller, so that doesn't work either. So it's not fifths. We can try sixths. The easiest thing to do would be to try the eighths, because that's an eighth. So here we have one eighth here already, because we're doing this three-fourths minus that one eighth. So let's fill this with eighths and see what happens. We've got two, three, four, five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six all together. So six eighths is equal to three fourths. So if we have three fourths and we take an eighth away, it's equal to five eighths. See? So what we did was we compared the three-fourths to the one-eighth 
and we filled this area here with as many one eighths as we could to find out what the difference was. Okay? For this one, we have two thirds minus one sixth. So we have two one third pieces. We can compare it to one whole if that helps. Okay? If that helps you, then do that, okay? We line up our one-sixth piece, make sure they're lined up correctly. We want to find this area right here, this region, to find the difference between two-thirds and that one-sixth, okay? We can try adding some sixths. to this area, and look, 4 6 is the same thing as 2 thirds. If we take one of the sixths away, our answer is 3 6. We want it in its simplest form, so we want the biggest piece that will fit there. We can actually take this half, and that would fit there. See that? It's in its simplest form if we use the smallest denominator piece. And 3 6 is the same thing as 1 half. See that? But that's not the simplest form because it, that denominator is larger than that too. See? We want it in its simplest form. We also could have used a fourth and a fourth, but that wouldn't be the simplest form because the denominator 4 is bigger than the denominator 2. Simplest form means the smallest denominator. So half works perfectly. We know the answer is half. That's the difference between two-thirds and one-sixth. Now we need to find the difference between three-eighths, one, two, three-eighths, and one-fourth. Three-eighths minus one-fourth means the difference between three-eighths and one-fourth. So we need to find this little area right here. And if you look carefully at our model, it looks like we could just stick a little eighth in here, couldn't we? That's the difference. The difference is one-eighth. For this problem, we have three-fourths minus seven-twelfths. We need to line up a three-fourths, one, two, three-fourths, and seven twelfths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we need to find out what this is. That would be the difference between three fourths and seven twelfths. What we can do is add some twelfths if we wanted to. But would that be the simplest form? Because that has a twelve denominator. Let's try to find something that'll fit here that has a smaller denominator. How about one fifth? Would that work? No, that's taller than the yellow ones. That's taller than the three-fourths, so it's not a fifth. How about one-sixth? Look at that. That lined up perfectly. So our answer in simplest form would be one-sixth. But we could also put two-twelfths here, which would be the same thing as one-sixth. The problem is that's not in simplest form because the denominator is bigger than the six. So the one-sixth is the one we would be looking for. For this problem, we have one whole minus three-eighths. So what we can do is take our one-eighth pieces and stack them up so that they're the same length as a one whole. And that means we're going to have eight-eighths. So that's equal to one whole. Now we can say we have 8 eighths take away 3 eighths. What's the difference between 8 eighths and 3 eighths? Well, we're just missing these 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. See? So 1 minus 3 eighths is equal to 8 eighths minus 3 eighths, which is equal to 5 eighths. Filling up this space here, to help us find the difference between them is one, two, three, four, five eighths. 
So when you have a whole number like this and you're subtracting a fraction to model it, first turn your fraction into whatever that denominator is. Turn your whole number into whatever that denominator is. So it's an eight. So we're going to use eighths and we're going to use eight of them. And then we're going to take three of them away. See? And that's going to leave five eighths. So you can make your own models by going to my Facebook page, printing out this sheet from the image thing and cutting them up, or you can get construction paper or school paper and make your own. Just make sure all of the bars are the same length. And then as you divide them up into pieces, make sure that each of these little pieces are the same and equal to each other. So all the eighths are all the same size, all the sixths are the same size as each other, all right? When we get into lesson 6.4, I'm going to show you how to do this by using factors that they have in common and then adding them to make the denominators so that they're the same. So stay with me and you can watch that one too in the coming up lesson. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.